Who's got a beer for Stone Cold Jane Austen? Pride and Prejudice, Chapter 3, The Ball. Mr. Darcy danced only once with Mrs. Hurst and once with Miss Bingley. Declined being introduced to any other lady and spent the rest of the evening in walking about the room, speaking occasionally to one of his own party. His character was decided. He was the proudest, most disagreeable man in the world, and everybody hoped that he would never come there again. <laughs> Fucking Darcy. <laughs> hey, that guy. He's getting this part. <laughs> there was one of her sisters sitting down just behind you, Mr. Darcy who is very pretty, and I dare say very agreeable. Do let me ask my partner to introduce you. Which do you mean, Darcy said. And turning round, he looked for a moment at Elizabeth. Elizabeth. <laughs> Still catching her eye, he withdrew his own and coldly said, she is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me. no humor at present to give consequence to young ladies who are slighted by other men. Darcy. You know what I think of Darcy? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Darcy! That's what I think of you! Oh my god. He's got another chance. <laughs> Mr. Darcy's behavior astonished and vexed her. Why? If he came only to be silent, grave, and indifferent, that she didn't come at all! <laughs> she could settle it in no way that gave her pleasure. He could be still amiable, still pleasing to my uncle and aunt when he was in town. Why not to me? If he fears me, why come hither? If he no longer cares for me, why silent? Tearing, teasing man! I will think no more about him! I'll think some more about him. Darcy! Stone Cold. I'll show you Stone Cold. This is Lizzie talking. She knows how to bring it. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> from the very beginning, from the first moment, I may almost say, of my acquaintance with you, your manners oppressed me with the fullest belief of your arrogance, your conceit, and your selfish disdain of the feelings of others were such as to form that groundwork of disapprobation on which succeeding events have built so immovable a dislike, and I had not known you a month before I felt that you were the last man in the world whom I could ever be prevailed on to 